Hi there. Welcome back to the Landre Society YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sewing a new pattern, new to me. Uh, it's the Maya Bra from AFI Atelier. It's actually a free pattern, which is incredibly generous and it's a great place to start if you want to make a wide bra but you don't want to make that investment in a pattern yet. Totally accessible, a great size range, so I'm going to give it a go. I've made one small change to the pattern before I cut it out. Um, one thing that I noticed on their website, there is a size calculator. When I put my measurements into there, it told me I should cut a 36C. Now I am not usually a C cup, I'm usually a D to a double D and I wasn't sure that was going to be right for me because it also suggested a C wire, which I don't use. Um, so what I've done is I've printed the 34 double D, which is the size that I would usually wear. And I'm going to trial that and see how it works. Um, basically because the wire size that I use fits better into this size and I'm going to show you how that looks. Um, I know that these wires fit for me so I'm going to go off that and look we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to change the camera angle so that I can show you the one pattern adjustment that I made prior to making my fit bra just because the wires were not going to have enough wire play so let me show you that. Okay so these are the 12D underwires that I like. They're a good size for me. And when I popped them against the pattern, I could see that once I take out the seam allowance, I'm gonna have absolutely no wire play, which is not great. So what I did was I added 13 mil to my wire line and extended it to the side and then because I needed to do that I've also added it to the top cup piece so this is a three-part cup one thing about this pattern is that the pieces are not labeled so the first thing I did was label the pieces because bra pieces are confusing <laughs> they a lot of them look the same and you can very easily get muddled up it is well notched though, so it's easy to figure out what goes where. But basically, you've got your side cup and your center cup, and they join. And then when they are joined, your top cup comes across like this. Very hard to show you in paper, but you get the general gist. So because I was increasing my wire line here, I also need to increase my top cup here. And then because I've increased that and brought it to the side seam, I'll also need to increase my back piece. I've lost my ruler. Anyway, you get the gist. I'll need to increase my back piece by 13 mil. I can increase that all the way to the back it's not going to matter because I'll shape that back piece later on anyway so I need to find my ruler and increase that back piece by 13 mil so that's the only change that I made pre fit bra just because I know that that wire is not going to fit otherwise so now that I've made that quick little change I'm going to go ahead and cut out my pieces and make a fit bra. Uh, you can refer back to another tutorial that we've got about making a fit bra that'll take you through that process. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna come back to you and let you know how I've gone with this. Okay, so I've made my fit bra and I only need to make a couple of small adjustments. The first one is I'm going to take five mil out of the center front 
So I've just, because this piece will be mirrored, I've just taken two and a half mil off and I'm just going to cut that off. Um, so that's a really easy adjustment. The other thing I need to do is I needed to take, I don't know if you can see there, but I had some gaping around this area. So I needed to take a dart out of this piece. So what I've done is pinned the dart on the piece and I'm just gonna draw with my pencil roughly where it is. I don't need to take anything out at this seam so it's gonna come away to nothing. And it was the same on both sides. I don't know if adding in that extra height at the side threw it off a bit. And then I am just going to basically splice that bit out. Stick those back together. My dog. <laughs> my sticky tape. I'm just going to pin that in place really carefully. So I'm going to remake this piece. I want to keep that same line at the bottom. This is Tracing Violin. I use this to make my patterns. sell it on the website it's I think it's five meters for ten dollars it's a really great great tool so I want to keep that seam there the same size otherwise it's not going to match up So I want to go from this point to this point. Remember to mark my notch. Okay. So that's my new piece. Hopefully this works and we get a really well-fitting bra. So that there was only those two small adjustments that I needed to make. I definitely would not have wanted a smaller cup than that. So I'm glad I went with the double D cup when the calculator on the website suggested a C. Um, I do always try to keep my normal or regular bra size in mind when I'm choosing what size to start with, with a new pattern doesn't always work in this case it has um, the band was a really good size so I don't think I would have wanted to go to the bigger band that was suggested when I put in my measurements so all in all this worked really well just those couple of little fit adjustments taking that five mil out of the center front and taking a dart out of that upper cup and of course my first adjustment that i did before i made my fit bra was adding that extra 13 mil to the side which i can see once i get my wires in properly that's actually going to be perfect. 
So now we get to play with the pretty fabrics. Throw that out. I've got to work with today this Petal Peach Wired Bra Kit. I'll drop the link to it below. Let me show you what's inside. So I'm really trying to sew some neutrals because I'm just drawn to pattern and colour and all my bras are patterned or colourful and I need some neutrals. So this is neutral without being boring. We've got our power mesh, our bra chul, this really pretty spot mesh and some beautiful cream eyelash lace. So this is the kit I'm going to sew with today. I'm going to take you through the steps. So all our findings and bits and pieces. So I guess the first thing I need to think about is what am I going to use where? So the eyelash lace is only so wide, so let's have a look. Obviously we could use the top cup piece. I really want to incorporate the spot mesh as well. So whether I do, let's see, if I cut the band out of this, Yeah, I would have enough to do the cups as well. Where's the back? Where's my other cup? So I could cut the band and the cups out of my spot and do the top edge out of the lace. But then I feel like I want to bring the lace onto the band somehow as well. It is wide enough to get the whole band out, but I think it would be pretty to just have just that peak of lace. And maybe if I, if you can picture, if I have that covering the whole piece and then overlay the lace so you see that spot poking out from underneath and then my bottom cups are spot and my top cup is eyelash that could be really pretty let's go with that all right I'm gonna cut it out okay so that's the lace placement that I've ended up with for my front band so step one is to assemble the cups now you can see, turn it around the right way, side cup, center cup, that these notches match up. The trick is making sure you get two left cups and two right cups, which can be trickier than you think. <laughs> so I'll start with my outer. Gosh, this chul is so fine. And then I've got my lining, which I've cut out of my bra chul. Now you have to remember with this pattern that it is a eight mil seam allowance. Usually with lingerie, there's a six mil seam allowance. So this is a little different. 
So we're just going to go ahead and sew those four seams and then we'll come back and attach the top cup. Okay, I'm just going to trim these right back. This fabric is so sheer, you don't want all that bulk of your seam allowance sitting in there in that seam internally. I sew on a quite old faff machine that never misses a beat, but it did not like that shawl. It's so fine. But I got there. Okay. So we have our lining. And we have our outer. There we go, which is, that's going to look so pretty set into there. Now we have to attach our top cup. So I have this lace. I'll just separate my lining and my <laughs> so fiddly. These are all so fine, these materials. So that's going to attach to that. And that will attach to that. So I'll go ahead and sew those together and then I'll show you how we join the two. Okay, I've trimmed back all my seams inside there as well. This lace is so delicate. <laughs> it's not easy to work with, but I'm getting there. Okay, so now we want to attach the outer cup to the lining at that upper seam. And we want to keep the beautiful eyelash edging. So what we want to do is open this I keep sticking to itself. Open this out and sew the lining to the outer. I'm just going to pin it so you can see what I mean. I don't know if you can hear, but my toddlers are singing the wheels on the bus over and over. Very cute. Okay, so once we sew that, we'll be left with that nice eyelash finish along the edge, but our seam enclosed on the inside. So I'll just do it again for this one. So you really get the idea. I'm a very visual learner, so often I read things and it's just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but if somebody shows me, I get it. So we're going to stitch those and then we will have our finished cups. Okay, now we're going to attach the lining of the bridge to the outer, which is basically a case of just stitching across. Lay your lining on top of your outer. We're going to stitch across there so that when we turn it back in, that seam is enclosed. I will do that and then we'll come back and set our cups in. I've given those a light press and the cups are ready to go. Okay, so I've got my 
lining attached to my outer or my frame. Now we're going to set the cups in. So when you're sewing your cups in, always start from the center front there because that's the bit that you're going to see and you want to be neat. So start from your center front and sew your cup in. Remember to use your 8mm seam allowance. So on one, you will be sewing with the cup on top and the frame underneath, and the other you'll be sewing with the frame on top and the cup underneath. I don't know which I prefer. I don't think it really matters. Not to me anyway. But you do want to get that nice, neat finish at the front. The side, we can worry about later. Okay, so let's sew those cups in. I just do that with a straight stitch too. Okay, now I'm going to sew my back on. I'm doing this a bit of a different way. Usually I would sew the back on before I put the cups in to do an enclosed seam, but because this fabric is so fine, I'm actually going to stabilize the side seam with some of the casing. The power mesh is fine, but this fabric is just so fine. So I feel like it needs some stabilizing there. So that's why I've done it this way. Um, if you wanted to do an enclosed seam, you would sew the back on before you set the cups in, which actually I feel like that's something I will show you in another video. But this is what I'm doing for this one. So I'm going to sew my back on. I've got a bit of overhang with that lace. Just going to trim that off. I'm going to sew my back on. And then what I'm going to do is stitch some casing to the seam and then stitch it down to enclose that seam and just stabilize that side seam a bit. So when you're stitching your casing, it's the same as when you're stitching your casing to your um, wire line. You need to leave a space for your elastic to attach and same at the bottom. So just stitch sort of two centimeters from the top and two centimeters from the bottom to keep it in place. And then it'll all get hidden when you attach your elastic later. Okay, so that's done. I feel like that's good. That's going to just give it a little bit of stability because this lace is just <laughs> its just moving all over the place as I'm sewing it. Okay, so next we will add the channeling to the cups. So you're going to sew it to your seam allowance with the fluffy side up all the way around when you get to this end again leave a little gap because you're going to attach your elastics there okay and we'll do that for both cups and then we'll come back and we'll talk about attaching the elastic to the bottom band okay now we're going to stitch the elastic onto the bottom of the band so line up the edge of your elastic with the edge of your bra and we're going to stitch close to the pico edge with a normal zigzag. Don't stretch your elastic. You might need to give it a little bit of a pull around any curves, but don't stretch it. And then once we've done that, we're going to turn it under and do the second pass. We're going to stitch from the top with a triple stitch zigzag. I just want to show you before I do the second pass. So when you turn your elastic up, this is when you'll want to enclose that casing. So snip it off to a good, um, good length. I usually have some handy clips, which I can't find, but it's good to pop a handy clip on or places like that. 
just so you can make sure that you're going to catch what you want to catch in the second pass. So you can see there also why we haven't stitched down our underwire casing yet because there wouldn't be enough room. You'd end up with your elastic sitting on top of it, which wouldn't be very comfortable. So we're going to stitch down our bottom band and then we'll stitch down our underwire casing so that that sits nice and flat on there. Okay, now we've stitched our bottom band elastic down. We can stitch our underwire casing down and pop our wires in. Remember to again not stitch right to the end on your outer wire line because we will be putting our narrow pico onto that edge there and we'll do the same thing as we did at the bottom here. We'll enclose the end of our channeling in our pico. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch down my casing and I'm going to pop my underwires in as well. Okay so we've got our wires in and it's starting to look like a bra. So now we're going to stitch our narrower pico to our underarm in the same sort of fashion as we did the bottom we're going to stitch the fluffy side up edge to edge and then flip it to the inside and top stitch with a zigzag what we want to do first is check that our back is going to end up the right size so Once I stitch that on there and I flip it back, hmm, that is actually pretty spot on. So I don't need to trim any off. Sometimes you'll need, if you were using say a two hook bra back, you would obviously need to trim some of that off. So you would take off your, what your seam allowance for your elastic is and trim off the excess. But my three hook looks like it's going to be pretty good. My other point will be when you get to this top point here, leave about six centimeters of elastic because we're going to create a loop for our hook, for our strap. So I'm going to sew that on and then we will come back and get to finishing off this bra. Okay, so now I'm going to attach the rings Baby? Mom. Yeah, my... I help. Shh, you can help my girls are here with me now this golden one yep i need that golden one please harper thank you it's small it is small you're right i want a d so i'm just threading those on and pinning them in place place in place ah. I'm going to get my strapping. Strapping? <laughs> I don't use strapping. I'm using some strapping, yep. Look at the tiny And I'm going to make Look my... Look at tiny I found. Yeah, that's a nice charm, ah! isn't it? Make my... And fold. Straps. Uh, just yeah, by threading those on. through. Shh. Girls, you're being too noisy. Through the slider. And I'm going to stitch those down with a really small zigzag. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that we've stitched our rings down in place, we're going to bring our strapping fluffy side up from the back to the front. Then through the slider. You need this in yours. Thank you, sweetheart. And there is our strap. Okay, so these are a bit long. I'm just going to trim those off a bit. And then you'll need to find your correct strap placement. You might want to try it on at this point. I'm just going to wing it. I'm sorry about the noise. <laughs> Grandpa. 
they're playing happily. Okay. So, we will then have our straps attached. And then what's left is to attach the bra back. So, you just open it up a little bit. Slip your fabric in between. I'm going to put my nice little label in there. And I stitched that again just with a really small zigzag. And then our hooks. I like to stitch that down with the hooks facing up just so I can try and not sew over them. <laughs> it's quite tricky. Shh, girls, shh. Quite tricky to get close enough with those. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sew those things and we are just about done. Okay, I've sewn my bow and my charm on and we are done. I really love this pattern. It came together really easily except for this peach spotule. Oh my god. It was just a nightmare to sew. <laughs> I actually had quite a bit of stretch in it and just did not want to play nice. But the end result I'm really happy with. The fit is great. And I can't wait to sew it again. I can't believe this is a free pattern. It's really generous. I'm so sorry about the twins screaming. <laughs> um, it's just my life. Uh, okay. Really love this. This is the Maya bra from AFI Atelier. I'm going to pop the link to the kit and the pattern below. I would not, however, suggest sewing this as a beginner because that mesh was not easy to deal with. I would choose something a bit more stable. Um, any of our embroidered mesh trim kits would be fine. It was just a bit of a bugger to sew. So there we go, the Maya bra. She won't be my last. Okay,